more importantly, men mentality, philosophies, systems. That's what creates champions at all levels, right? We can know the technique, throw it blue in the face, but if you're out of shape, you're not going to win it when it matters. If you're not disciplined with your diet, you're not going to win when it matters. and catch up to you at some point, right? Okay. How many guys in here follow college wrestling? How many guys this year went to the national tournament? Okay, good. Uh, I don't know, this past year, there were some good things that happened with, with our program, uh, some individuals across the board. Uh, Coach talked a little bit about it before. I think our history and tradition wasn't there for uh, at least where we were at as far as program went. So that was one of the things we focused in on is, hey, if we don't have history and tradition right now, and we did, I shouldn't say we don't, but it wasn't like everybody compares it to as far as what it takes to win national. So we had to create some kind of culture that was a very positive environment, but then the culture kind of reinforced itself once it's created, right? And that's a hard thing to do. It's actually a very hard concept um, to redo a culture. It's like it's a shock to come into, and it was a very challenging thing to do is walk into a program that already had like its self in play, and then we had to just stop things the way it were, do a 180 on it, and restructure some things. And then we reaped the benefits this past year. It took a while. There were some guys that came through, did some great stuff for us. But this past year, um, we you know we put four guys on the podium. We had a national champ, national finalist. Kid finishes third, gets hot right at the right time at the national tournament. Um, does that stuff happen by mistake? I don't. I personally don't think so. I think all that. You guys don't win state titles by mistakes, right? So why, in college, when it's just as competitive, if not maybe a little bit more, because there's so many good guys, I don't think that stuff happens by mistake. So this past year, our 97 pounder uh, wins a national title. You guys know who Mike Machiavello is. Good, great story. This gives some of you guys some inspiration. Um, Started wrestling ninth grade in high school. Ninth grade? How many guys in here have been wrestling before ninth grade? Okay, so put that in perspective. He started four years in high school, gets four years in college, basically eight or nine years into the system and wins a national title this year. All right. Comes in, guy trained like a madman. Didn't know how to wrestle. Had a losing record his first year. Most guys would be discouraged. I think he was like 10 and 12. Get very discouraged, right? And like, I can't. There's no, no way I can win a national title if I have a losing record my first year. Comes back the next year, breaks 500. It's 500. Two years into college, it's 500. <coughs> okay? Takes a year off, red shirts, but his mentality from day one, and he'll tell you, because when you ever come across him, he'll tell you the story. His mentality from day one is to win a national title, and I refuse to settle for anything less. And I can tell you it was a struggle at times with some of the guys on our team because they're like, stop saying it. Stop talking about it. Stop saying that you're going to do it. It's annoying to keep hearing. And then he gets a little bit closer. He comes out um, after he redshirts. Actually, I shouldn't say that. He, he went to the round of 12 and then redshirted. So he makes it to the round of 12 at the national tournament, 184 pounds. He was like 25 and 8 or something like that. And he wrestled hard. He made a lot of little mistakes, but he wrestled hard. Takes that red shirt here, and the stuff that we were talking about, where we write stuff down, and he just kind of implemented a plan, very disciplined. Comes back this past year, and it was the same thing. You know, I think there was the luxury with our sport, it's the only person or people that need to believe is the people that you're associated with. The guy knew he was going to win a national title. There was no doubt in his mind that he was not going to be denied a national title. It was, it was, uh, we went to the national tournament, and it was the most focused I've seen him. It was like, Tunnel vision on. I remember right before uh, the NCAA finals, he wrestled the guy a couple times and lost to him in, uh, during the season. And I was like, you know, there were some things that happened in the match before that we wanted to fix. And I was, we were talking about it a little bit. And he's like, I got it. I'm not losing. And I'm like, I know, but make sure if we get in the third period, the riding times this, you got to know this, that. He's like, I'm not losing. I'm going to win this match. And there was something just the look in his eyes. And I was like, I'm done. I'm, he's going to win this match so confident that he was going to win this match. But he didn't just wake up. It wasn't like he just woke up the day before the national tournament and knew that he was going to win the match. There was a whole system in play. The guy spent every week with sports site. Most confident guy I know, most hardworking guy I know, most disciplined guy that we were around. We got a lot of them. He was up there with the best of them in our room. 
He spent a week, every week, he'd go with Sports Psych. Every round at the national tournament, he was on the phone. And I, I actually walked up to him because, you know, I'm a little strict when it comes to guys on the phone competing. And I'm like, what are you doing on your phone? He's like, well, I'm talking to Michelle, Sports Psych. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. And in the hallway, and then, like after every night, he would go through his routine, get himself ready mentally for the next day of his business. But at the same time, there was enjoyment. There was enjoyment through the process. It was business, but there was enjoyment. So, as we get in this, and you guys run that mile, right? You guys ran that mile today, and it's like, there's things we're gonna do, and we don't understand why we're doing them, but there's gonna come a critical time in your career when you're competing, and it might not even be wrestling. Maybe it's like 15, 20 years down the road. These things that you're doing now are gonna, I think, make you understand why you're going through them and why you're doing them. Um, certainly, as a coach and as you get more experience, I'm still learning a lot. There's critical times and things that happen, and you're like, why did these things happen? And then it makes a little more sense as you can kind of reflect back. So, I think in this story, don't limit yourself on what you can accomplish. I say that again, don't limit yourself on what you think you can accomplish in the sport. There's guys in this room right now that's going to be the click of the mind to win, whether it's a state title, a national title in high school, or a national title in college. You get around some of the best people in here, they can tell you the same thing. If I could go back into my career, I would have changed my mindset tremendously. After working with the guys that I've worked with and seeing what they've done mentally to prepare themselves and the confidence side of things, that's the one place that I would address uh, that we lack right now. We sit here and we do drill and we do all this stuff, but how we work it in our mind, I think ultimately will separate us from the best in the world, national, state, whatever level we're trying to compete at. It's a hard thing to do, but I say there's a lot of different things you can do to exercise the mind, address it, attack it, and good things are going to happen. All right? Um, happy to stick around, answer questions you guys have, philosophy, technique, whatever it is. I know coaches have done some tremendous things here. This is a great concept, and uh, you guys can get better from it. Um, but more importantly, you guys are getting exposed to some of the best people in our sport. So keep up the good work, and uh, appreciate everything you guys showed today. I'm good. All right, Coach Pat, uh, Bob, thank you so much. And uh, guys, again, make sure uh, you follow what they're doing in their program. Um, it's, an amazing, it's an amazing story, and it's only getting better from here. Put the hands together. <laughs>